Uh, if I haven't met you yet, my name is Maurice. I'm one of the pastors here on staff. Uh, so shout out to every single person who is in the room, but also everybody that's online. Uh, I was watching uh, YouTube uh, this week, and uh, this pastor said, uh, the cyber sanctuary. So I'm going to go ahead and just adopt that and say, shout out to the cyber sanctuary that's watching online. All right. Um, before I get started, I, I have to also make mention, um, oh, sorry, that's attached to the ground. Um, before I get started, sorry, people. Uh, before I get started, um, also, um, uh, Quincy mentioned it just a little bit, but in the month of February, we have tons of events that's going on. Uh, I know we say check out the website, but seriously, check out the website and also our Connect Center. In the next coming weeks, uh, you're going to be seeing some different information about events and some things that's going to be um, taking place in the month of February, uh, in particular around how we as a faith community uh, lean into honor and celebrate Black History Month. So I would love for you to be a part, so take part in that and look at some of the things that's taking place. All right? Uh, well, listen, last week, our lead pastor, uh, Bill Stevens, he kicked off a three-week series. And what Bill did last week, I encourage you to go back and watch it. Uh, we started off the series, and what we're doing is we're setting up a framework. Uh, of we're looking at the book of Psalms that's found in the Bible. And the book of Psalms is like this collection of Psalms. And in particular, what we're looking at is the Songs of Ascent. In particular, this passage that we're leaning into, um, what it talks about in the details is a journey that people are on. That's what Bill really talked about last week. It's this journey that all of us are on. Of Some of us are exploring faith. Some of us are in faith and we're digging deeper into our faith. Some of us are questioning. Some of us are all over the spectrum, but it's a journey for every single one of us. And if any person starts to talk to you and they feel as if they've arrived or they got God figured out, can I give you some advice? Can I give you some advice this morning? Put on your track shoes and run far, far away from them, okay? You can laugh at church. It's okay. Like, seriously, if a person feels as if or they got God figured out or they talk in a way where God is in this box and it's rigid and they got all the answers, run, forest, run, okay, people? Far, far, far away. Some of you will catch that. Um, but today, as we lean into this idea of, of um of the songs of ascent, in particular, this journey that the people of God are on, um, it's called ascent because every so often the people of God would go up to the city of Jerusalem. And when they went up to the city of Jerusalem, on this journey, they would put language to their experience with God. What I love about the book of Psalms is that it's so honest, it's so real. People had questions, people doubted. People of God uh, that, that were in confusion and perplexed. People of God that would start writing and just talk, talk about how glorious God is. It's the range of the human experience that you can find, find in the book of Psalms. And in particular, today for my time, I want to lean into something that may seem a little elementary. But the book of Psalms are actually a collection of songs. Like these were words that weren't just like said in their mind. They sung these words. They begin to sing out these words on their journey to Jerusalem, which makes me really lean into today's topic around worship. And what is the role that worship plays in our lives? I think this is a key ingredient for every single one of us because when we look at Scripture and when we look at the theme of Scripture, worship is essential. Worship is a key element of how God communicates with people. And today, why I lean into this is because I also think it's a part of our lives that we leave on the side. It's a part of our lives that I think we don't lean into enough. Some of us in the room, we kind of leave it up. We, we think to ourselves, uh, worship is that thing that we leave up to the experts, uh, that we leave up to the people who, who can hit those notes, uh, that, are, that are gifted in it, that they can sing. That's for them, and I'll just listen. I was riding down the street this morning, actually, it's not this morning, this week, and, and actually I was turning on a, a particular worship song, and I just kind of felt like, man, I just need something to kind of get me in that right headspace. And God really just kind of, I sensed that God, right? Like sometimes I hit and I miss, but I, I begin to sense that God wanted me to turn down the music. And what I felt that God was pressing upon my heart was that, Maurice, your words are enough. With all them cracked notes, I know you tone deaf, you, you can't really sing. You think you can harmonize, but you really can't. Like, I understand, and yet I want your voice. It's actually your voice that's enough. So we asked the question this morning. If I were to put a particular topic to the topic for us this morning, it would be, why do we sing? Why do we sing? 
I'm going to read a particular passage found in Colossians chapter 3, and then I'm going to pray for our time together. Uh, Colossians chapter 3 says these words right here, uh, 3 verse 16. It says, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Would you bow your heads? Let's pray for our morning. God, thank you for this moment. Would you, like we already know, you're amongst us, but may we feel, may we, may we begin to sense your word this morning. May your word be the thing that is deposited in our hearts. And whatever it is that you have for us this morning, may we grab a morsel, may we grab a crumb of your gospel and move forward in our life. And may we see how worship is an essential ingredient in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Uh, being a, a child in the 90s, growing up in the 90s, there was a particular commercial that became very popular. And this commercial was from a company called Hostess. Uh, Hostess is famous for their Twinkies and all sorts of other, yeah, all sorts of other goodies, whatever, right? Um, but Hostess, and, and in Hostess um, had this particular commercial that was really famous, and, and it would ask the question in these commercials that got really popular, where's the cream filling? As I was looking back in some of these commercials, uh, there was one in particular with a raccoon, and, and a raccoon was like on this like snowboarding slope, and he's running up, and he like looks up in the sky, and he thinks it's this Twinkie, and he's like eyes are big, and he's excited, and he's like opens his arms to grab it, and it's actually like the bottom of a snowboard, and he like is like slammed to the ground. No harm was done. Actually, the raccoon gets up in like a human voice, and the commercial goes on to say, "Where's the cream filling?" He thought it was this Twinkie. He thought it was this golden, delicious, delectable that he thought he was going to eat. And the question that he asked is, where's the cream filling? I ask that this morning, or I say that this morning, because when God looks at our life, I think there is a question that often comes up of where's the worship? I don't say that in a condemning way this morning, y'all. I say that in a way where as I lean into Scripture and when we look at our journey, worship isn't something that we get to say we leave up to the experts. God, like Paul is telling us in Colossians, is looking for us to sing to God with gratitude. Actually, a part of my sermon, towards the end of my sermon, I'm going to have Whitney come up here, and I don't just want to preach and teach to you. Uh, we're just going to actually talk through a few practical ways of what worship looks like beyond Sunday. And for all my Bible readers in the room, seminary students, ex-seminary students, whatever that looks like, I fully am aware that worship is more than just singing. Today, though, I want to emphasize what it looks like to sing to God. One theologian, when he describes worship, puts it this way, worship is the believer's response of all that they are, mind, emotions, will, body, to what God is and says and does. Essentially, this theologian, what he's getting at is all of me responding to all of God. If you're a person who takes notes, that's one of the things that I want to mention to you this morning is worship essentially is all of me responding to all of God. Worship is many things, but one of the things that I want to emphasize for us this morning is response. Worship is response. When we look at Colossians 3, it says, let the word dwell in you richly. If worship is a response, then the question becomes, what are we responding to? What is it that we're responding to? Because I think often for myself, I'm going to speak for me, sometimes I come in and I think to myself, I'm going to wait for the right song. Are they singing the song that I want to sing? Or if I'm at home and I know that there's a place where I just can sing to God, I kind of like, let me, let me find out, uh, uh, give me a reason to sing. Give me a reason why I need to sing a song. Or let me just think about this. Or let me, well, let me wonder about if, if that's not something I normally do, then let me just let them just sing to me. And sometimes I get in this sort of space of being entertained by such a good voice, and I think that God wants to nudge us into a place of what real worship looks like. When we talk about worship, and if we see it's a response, then we're responding to something. 
And I believe Paul lays that out for us in Colossians. Now, in just a backdrop of Colossians, um, the backdrop is that they're a church that he's writing a letter to, and they're actually facing a lot of false teaching. They're facing a lot of people who are actually um, attacking the, uh, who God is. And if you're like a super churchy person, like the supremacy of Christ and the sufficiency of Christ. And, and one of the things that Paul does is he gives them all these sorts of outlines and lays out all sorts of things. And one of the things that he does is he says, make sure that you're worshiping together. M- make sure that you're getting together and you're remembering the message of Jesus Christ. Let the message of Jesus Christ dwell in you richly. I think he says these words as I begin to study throughout Scripture. It's because when we really have the message of Jesus Christ rooted in us, that's all the response that we need. We are responding to the message of Jesus Christ, the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of Jesus Christ. We're responding to what God has already done for us. And when we look at that cross, let us not forget that it's Jesus Christ who we cling to, that we can follow. And, and it's out of an overflow of gratitude that we're like, man, God, you showed up in that divorce that I was facing. You showed up in that addiction that I struggled with. You show up today in my complications of life that I'm going through even now. You show up in my struggle that I have in life. You show up, and I respond to that. For one reason, we respond to God because of what he does. When we look around, if we slow our lives down enough, we can begin to see all that God does. Let us not ever get too selfish where we think to ourselves, we can just sit back and opt out of worship. That that's not something that we should lean into. God is always longing for us to respond to what he's doing in our life. The question I have for you this morning is, what's the last thing God has done for you that's worthy of gratitude, that's worthy of a praise, that's worthy of us slowing down in life to say, Lord, I lift up you right now. If you're a churchy person or a Christian in the room, you say that you've been following God for quite some time. Um, I just want to give you an even bigger nudge. I just want to nudge you even further. If you're a person who's saying that you're not necessarily a Christian or you're a person that's more skeptical or kind of questioning, just press pause for just a moment. I just want to go on a quick rant for my Christians in the room. Uh, And I just want to tell you, um, when we mature and grow up in our faith, we don't just worship and come to God for what he can do, but we worship and come to God because of who he is. That's a very different step that we must take. And I think that God is calling us to grow up a little bit and not just look to what can you do for me? We recognize that God is definitely not a genie. There's one psalmist that sings this amazing song and she says, Lord, if you never do another thing, you've already done enough. When we look at our lives, it's not only what he does for us, but we can say, God, because of who you are. In Psalm 95, uh, I want to read for you in your hearing, this is what we see the psalmist writing and saying. In Psalm 95, it says these words, verse 1, come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God. Look, they're detailing who he is. The Lord is the great God, the great king above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands form the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. The psalmist details for us this sort of heart of gratitude that is overflowing. And what they begin to do is they begin to look at what God has done, but also who God is. I think there's something innate in all of us, uh, whether we find ourselves calling ourselves a Christian or not, uh, that when we get in nature, and as people who live in Boulder County and right up against the mountains and the flat irons, when we get to this place, we are in awe of creation. 
We're in awe, and many of us, we go on hikes. Not me, but we go on hikes. <laughs> and we get to this mountain, to the top, to this peak. Is it called summit? To the top, whatever. Where I think you can just take a picture, and you can show me, and I'll be like, whoa, look at God. But anyways, like, we get to this place, and we're in awe. And we're like, whoa. And if we're not careful, I believe that creation points to creator. We're in awe of that. And so many of us, we are just struck by who God is. Some of us are just struck by that creation. And we take these trails and we do all these different things. And we look at these things. And what creation shows us is who God is. And it's a place where I believe all of us are wired for worship. Because the place of worship is not me reminding God who he is. Worship is me reminding myself who God is. I got to press my way in. I got to push myself into a place of worship because if I don't, I'll drift. And for all the Bible readers in the room, I'm not going to make assumptions like we all are, but there's a story after story after story found in Scripture of people who drifted from God, people who found themselves in a wilderness, people who found themselves distant from who God is. And I think worship is one of those areas that helps us fight through our doubt, helps us fight through our questions, helps us fight through our confusion, helps us fight through our human experience of emotions and, and that question of why would that happen? Why would God let that happen to me? Why, why would that take place in my life? I believe play, worship is a battleground, a place that we can respond to God and refocus us of who God is. We worship not only for what God does for us, but because of who God is. And this morning, I want to lean into not only a way of preaching through that, but practical ways because I got to be honest with you, as much as I'm preaching and it's a sprinkle of rant here and there, I don't have this figured out. I'm not perfect at this. Don't ever get it twisted just because someone's on stage that their life has everything checked the box and all the things figured out. I find myself in dry places, in dry seasons. I find myself looking back like, when's the last time I worshiped? When's the last time on my own? without others, without a good song, that I lifted up God's name. I find myself in these seasons, and I preach first to myself and then to you, because it's important for us to recognize that worship is an essential ingredient on this faith journey. And I impress us all towards that, because I believe in the West, we begin to think to ourselves that, like I said, the experts have it together. I remember traveling to Cuba on a mission trip, and in their particular church service, um, I went to several of them, and it was really interesting that some of them had equipment, and it was sort of rusty and sort of this, and they were kind of having sort of uh, technical complications, and they kind of worked their way through it. And then we went to another church service, and it was at a home, and it was about 40 people kind of really kind of crammed into this place, and they didn't have any fancy lights. They didn't have any sound system. And it was just one person that kicked off the song and began to sing to God. And there was something special about that. Because when we get together collectively and we lift up God's name, I believe it shows us something. It recenters us. It, it brings about an awareness that this is an encounter that God communes with people in worship. Uh, Whitney's going to be joining me in just a few moments, but as she makes her way to the stage, um, I think it's important for us to know, uh, some of you, you're new, maybe you're not, uh, Whitney's our worship pastor here. And uh, when I first met Whitney, I thought that she just was like, had it all together, and she loves this sort of space, and she sings so good. I mean, if she sings good, can I get a hand clap if she sings good? I mean, come on. <laughs> And she's, she's shaking her head no because she understands, like, where I'm kind of going with this as well. Um, when I first met Whitney, she told me that this is not one of the fav like, most things that she loves to do. Like, on a scale of 1 to 10, <laughs> how, do you, how much do you loving this moment right now? Well, I have thrown up already this morning. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is like my actual nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to her and she, this whole week. She's just like, oh my goodness, I don't know what I, wait, how, wait, what do you want me to do? And I just looked at your life. You can interrupt any moment. I was moment. like, yeah. you have to tell me exactly what you're going <laughs> to ask me. Don't give me any surprises. Don't have any follow-up questions because yeah. I need notes because I can't remember my thoughts and words when there's humans looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you get up every week and sing and like glorious songs every single week. And yet she was just like, it's not the same. No, nope. it's not the same. It's, I, yeah, I can't make it up in my mind, but she says it's not the same. Uh, as we detail, we talk about worship this morning. As we talk about uh, worship being a response, I, I want to also extract a few practical principles, a few practical things um, of what worship can look like in our life, um, not only collectively, but also personally. And if worship is an essential ingredient, and we see all throughout Scripture over and over and over again. Actually, Whitney, you brought it to my attention. You're probably going to say it earlier. I'm going to say it. But how many times in Scripture do you see this sort of thing? So there's 400 mentions of singing praises to the Lord in Scripture, and 50 of them are commands. Wow. So it's pretty important. I think that I'm was, pretty yeah. passionate right, about right. it, as you can And definitely passionate about imagine. it. And so one of the things I want to do, Whitney, is kind of... Um, in some ways, I'm going to be honest with you, humanize you as well, because I think even for myself, I'm like, oh, we need, you, know, you always worship, you sing, you know it, you got it together. But there's so much more to your story, and there's so much more um, of even your background. Can you give us just a little bit of that to bring us closer to, like, the other experience for worship for you? Yes, I also made him give me this question, and I did also write it down, even though I know who I am and how I grew up. <laughs> but that's like the level of nervousness we're doing. You got it. We got it. <laughs> um, so I grew up in the church. Yeah. Um, since day one, my dad's a pastor. Um, he's one of my favorite teachers, and my mom is an incredible um, woman of faith and prayer, and they're both just really deep spiritual wells. Um, and they're like my best example in this world for... Um, how to put God first in life and love and all the in-between. Wow, wow. When we talk about response to God and to, God and, and to who God is, um, I wrote down this question because I think it's important. We, we, we see you rehearsed under the fancy lights. We see uh, the worship that God desires from us, and we hear, oh, this is a command. This is something that we should be doing. It's not just a stage thing. But in sometimes because a person is so good, it can in some ways be a little intimidating of like, well, do I have to be Whitney? What would you say to a person who's like wrestling with, or not even Whitney, like Maverick City or whoever your favorite artist, like, do I have to be that to sing? Or, you know what I mean? But what would you say to a person who's wrestling with like, well, I'm not that, so I'm just listen? Sing. Just sing. All right, next question. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. I'm just, yeah. The Bible never says, mm. let those who have a great voice that's good. sing. That's good. Like it's a spiritual gift that's required before mm. you sing. And it doesn't say anything about natural talent being required to be a part of your worship. That's mm. not in scripture. And it doesn't have to be a part of how you approach the space. Jesus cares exactly 0% mm. about your bad notes. I, <laughs> um. every, every week, I'm almost every week I come in and we'll kind of be rehearsing. I'm going to do it a sound check. And then it, I'm not supposed to be singing at all. And then I just start singing. And then I look to it and say, am I sharp or am I flat? And I say that's, you're none of those. <laughs> <laughs> you're nowhere near. I can't you're even not even speak <laughs> to what you're doing. <laughs> as, if, as if I know like language. I'm like, yeah. am I sharp or flat? Am I like, what's my note? And like, you're nowhere near what you're supposed to be. Yeah, my husband always says that I have a great vocal tone range, which if you're not a musician, is not a thing. It's not a real term. It's not anything. It drives me insane, and he thinks it's hilarious. So he does, Jesus doesn't care about your vocal tone yeah. range. Yeah. It's not, it's not a thing. He just cares that you're showing up. And you have to remember, he loves the sound of your voice. Come on. Come on. He loves who you are. He made you who you are. Wow. And that is what he wants to hear from you. You are be the beloved of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. And there's no other way to respond than singing back to him. He loves that. Amen. When you think about worship beyond the stage and more to our, or beyond even just collectively and into our personal life, how does worship show up for you in your personal life? Yeah, this is kind of a hard one. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
because it's really easy that it, it's my job, right? So it's easy for it to become a box that I check. Hmm. Um, and I actually have to work really hard making sure wow. that it's a posture of my heart on a daily basis. And when I get off, I will say it's an easy space for me to enter back into um, because like what you're talking about, mm -hmm. I see God in creation and I see God in music. And if I hear a dope bass line or a sick drum fill or hear the voice of like Whitney or Aretha or Stevie, I'm yeah. like, okay, God is real, right? <laughs> and that's just easy place for me to go, God, you're amazing. Or you drive up I-70 and you mm -hmm. get to Genesee and you come up over the hill and you're like, okay, God's real. Yeah, so you yeah. sit in awe and wonder. So those are easy places for me to get back to, but it is a practice and it takes practice for me personally even though this is what I do all the time, it's just easy to get caught up in the mundane yeah. of what I'm doing. And um, again, like I said, not make it the full posture of my heart. So that's the way I have to check myself every day. Yeah. When it comes to our church community, we hired Whitney almost a year ago. We're April. April. Okay, April. Almost. We've got a few months uh, before a year. And one of the reasons that we brought on our team and what we saw in you um, was this place of a worshiper who likes to worship. And we've seen that it was beyond the stage. And one of the things that we also knew was that you had a vision for church. You had a vision growing up in church. You had a vision. And one of the things that we also recognize as a church community is that we want movement towards the direction as it relates to a vision in our church. Um, how would you say, or what would you describe as your goal for our church community collectively on Sundays when we gather? How should we enter in? How should we be thinking about this space and responding to God in worship? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So anytime I enter into a space of worship, wherever that is, whether that's here in church, on a retreat, in a Zoom room, um, in my living room by myself. I just pray for the Holy Spirit to invade that space and um, make his presence known. And so I, I pray for that first. And then I pray for a contagious spirit of worship to rise up and take over the hearts and minds of every person in the room, even if it's just me and my piano. That's my prayer before I start anything. Mm -hmm. So... I was, I was singing and leading here before I ever worked here right, officially. Right. And um, I would pray that in this space every time I came in. And, you know, now I pray that every day as a part of my job and every Sunday morning. And we as a team pray that, that no one would remember, like, who's up here and who's saying what mm -hmm. and what songs we did. But you would remember the feeling of God moving through you and in you. And um, you would remember how you responded to that. So... Part of it is, is my work as a leader um, and my response and how I'm connected to our church and our vision and our leadership and, and the Lord. And, and part of it is you. Hmm. Like the biggest part of it is you, actually. It's your yes and your willingness to lean into what God is doing in your lives and through you and um, to respond with your praise, um, to respond in the good and the bad and everything in between. Yeah. I mean, that follows up to my next question because life gets hard. And sometimes we are walking in this, play, this place and some of us have heavy hearts. Some of us are coming in with a real weighted week, a weighted month, a couple of months. Some of us find ourselves in places of depression. Some of us find ourselves in spaces where life is getting, feels as if it's getting the best of us. What role does worship play in our life when it gets hard? What, what about when it's hard? So I feel like this should have not been a question or it should have been your only question because I feel like this is my area of expertise. Okay. <laughs> we got um, to this place that we wanted so to get sorry to. Sorry if this is an hour long, guys. <laughs> um, without going into a whole sob story, I am just fresh off of an eight plus year crawling and wow. clawing my way through it, circumstances far outside of my control, whether it came to, well, everything in our life, hmm. everything. So my health and um, infertility and work and deaths and grief and depression and all these things. Wow. Um, 
And through all of that, I'm a worship leader, and it's my job to get on stage in front of thousands of people wow. every week and lead them in worship and say what is true about God in a way that's authentic. So how do I show up as an authentic person? Because I'm just kind of me wherever I am. Um, but me, <laughs> who was then was really struggling mm. and really struggling to see, to n know the promises of God and not feel them in any kind of way. Wow. Um, and it was horrible. Yeah. It was, it was really, really horrible. And so I had to work really difficultly to find um, a way to worship who God is, even though I couldn't see any evidence of it in my current situation. Mm. And I very closely related to Job, which if you've yeah. read the book of Job is like not the homie that you're trying to be like. Yeah. He <laughs> lost all the things and he got boils. Yeah. So he's like not ideal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For real. So I, I don't... I don't have it completely figured out. Yeah. Um, but what I can say is like, there's purpose in your pain. Hmm. And in the hard is where you can look back and remember. Um, I mean, almost all the songs we sing have something about how God is faithful. And it could just be because that's what I've come out of. And so that's songs that I'm picking for us, which then you're welcome. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> um, yeah. but that doesn't mean, just because there's purpose doesn't mean that everything will have a pretty bow and it will yeah. work out and it will come yeah. together and you'll get all the things you wanted. But you are the beloved. And even if all you can muster in this space or your time alone with Jesus is like a groan, that's biblical, that's good. That's good. and he hears that, that's and good. that's just as good as belting a song out at the top of your lungs. That is powerful. It, it, that it details for us, even in the groaning of our spirits, when we don't have words, that Jesus Christ hears and intercedes for us. Is that what you're getting at? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot. I was supposed to talk in the mic. That's <laughs> I'm really it's good at this. It's all good. It's all good. Um, yeah, it's just about trusting who God is and who he says he is, even when you kind of don't. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I think if you're in a tough season, I would say read the book of Lamentations. It's super short. Yeah. And it's, it's just a bunch of like, they literally use words like bitterness and gall. And um, it's... It's a hard read, but it's a good read because it's a reminder that like, even when you're just completely downcast, it's a great example of looking up yeah. and remembering why we have hope and then putting that into practice and literally lifting your gaze and praising anyway. Wow. Wow. For the person that's in the room who's wondering, where do I even start? Where's a step for me? Uh, where does, uh, and I, whatever the demographic may be, right? But what could be a couple of first steps or a step that would help me to at least try this thing out, to at least see what this area is when it comes to my faith walk? How would you communicate to that person? Yeah, I think a good, like just a personal place to start is, is with gratitude. Um, I've talked about like the looking back. And in um, in Hebrew, the word thanks is used 47 times just in the Psalms, which is what we're yeah. walking through, the Psalms of Ascent. Um, so in the whole book of Psalms, which is pretty big, yeah. um, they use the word thanks 47 times. And the psalmist um, pointed to specific things. They did, general thanks is great, but pointing to specific things yeah is what really like pulls and tugs at your heartstrings. And I think they knew that that was important and yep. then put that in there for us to look back and be able to remember. So there are points, even if there's only one that you can muster, where you can look back and see God's faithfulness yeah. or his provision yeah. or his protection or whatever that looks like. And that's the thing you can say, I am thankful for this and I'm going to start here. And then coming out of that thankfulness with praise. Um, Psalm 9, 1 says, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. Mm -hmm. um, it's your whole being, and that's how you can sing out of that. So personally, that's what I would say is a great place to start. Okay. Um, one, sing. Just like sing out loud, it <laughs> works. 
um, whether you have a good voice or not. But two, like find that thing that you are grateful for yeah. from God and thank him for that in your praise. Yeah. I, go ahead. And then collectively. Yes. Collectively. <laughs> he asked me two Because that's on the notes. Yeah, it's on the notes. Yes, so right. I thought of an answer. Um, this is my like soapbox moment. Okay. So collectively, I would say you look around the room and say, Are, do my celebrations match each other? So if you're at a Broncos game and they score a touchdown, mm. are you like chilling hands in pockets and going, yay, nailed it, guys? Maybe this season, but like likely in general, <laughs> likely not. I so got you. I got from you. From my experience, yeah. my husband and I are huge sports fans. We went to every single Avs playoff and Stanley yes. Cup game, and I was insane. I went completely nuts for yeah. every goal. Nuts, you guys. <laughs> nuts. And if I'm not going just as nuts for the creator of the universe, hmm. what does that say about me and what I believe? Hmm. So my challenge would be collectively, hmm. do your celebrations match? Wow. Wow. I think that's important because what it gets to is that no matter who we are, whether we find ourselves as a Christian or not, we're hardwired to respond when we want or when we see a celebration or gratitude or thankful about something, whether it's a sports game, whether it's a wedding, whatever it may be, there's an innate response. And I think that's why this message this morning, I really did my best to get at, uh, God has done something first and there is something worthy of responding to. Um, to end our time together, uh, I think it's important to just make it just clear as we lean into this area. One of the things that I used to do, and that every now and then I'll find myself doing, is that I will go on like Google and I'll just type lyrics to good, good father like lyrics to Old Rugged Cross, like whatever it, the song is, and I would just type lyrics to it. And for me, sometimes I'm just reading the lyrics. Sometimes I'm just like familiarizing myself with the lyric of what is it that they sung that Sunday? If you're a person who's maybe looking for another extra step, a Monday or Tuesday or whatever that looks like, maybe your first step is looking at and looking and reading some of the lyrics of the songs that we read. And I think you'll see that we're pointing to a God who is faithful and has done some amazing things for us and who he is. Um, to wrap up our time, and then I'm gonna pray for us, um, what would be just a final bow that you would put on this whole morning as it relates to worship? By the way, Whitney said, um, you're kind of trying to squeeze this into like 30, 32 minutes, and this is, needs a lot of weeks, and we need to talk and about so worship. So it needs to be a full series yeah. <laughs> where we teach everyone about worship. And this is like, so, so be I'm, looking for that. Right? So she's like, I'm going to do this, but this needs to actually be a series. Like We need to do way more teaching on this. So uh, we'll be trying to press into that. Um, but to tie up our morning this time, when it comes to response, when it comes to all that we've talked about, how would you just wrap up our morning for the, our time together? I learned this word when I was lucky enough to be in Israel leading worship, and the, the word is Hebrew and it's hineni. And um, it, it's a combination of two words in Hebrew, but it translates to here am I. Hmm. Um, and it's not a geographical wow. location. Yeah. It's not like here I am, it's here am I. Um, and it has changed how I show up in my worship um, it's changed how I lead worship. It's changed how I've shown up in my entire life um, because it is a response to God. And when we see it in scripture, it's a response. When we see it, all the people you've heard about, um, it, like, we'll use Abraham. So yeah. Abraham says, Hineni, here am I, hmm. um, before one of the more difficult decisions of his life. Yeah. And it happens in these pivotal moments in these people's lives where God is about to do something wow. and make a move that, uh, that affects profound change in that person, um, their community, and in the world surrounding. Um, and it's not easy stuff. It's a risk for sure. If you're, if you're looking for those specific words and you look back at the story, the stuff they're saying yes to is yep. not ideal. Mm -hmm. um, but like Ascent is my current season of Hineni. Mm, saying yes. They offered me this job a lot of times and I was like, <laughs> oh, it's really far from our house. It's not convenient. Right. And 
and I realized I was going away from what, where God had been teaching me and leading me. And so wow. this, is, this is my Haneni. This is my here am I. Wow. This is my send me. So I'd love to see us as a church embrace Haneni and say, here am I, all the broken and messed up parts of me. And I'm ready to respond and worship the God who calls me and calls me beloved. Amen. Amen. Can we pray, please? Well, Whitney, I want to wrap up our time together by just praying. And I just also want to let you all know, um, if you haven't introduced yourself to Whitney or, you know, welcome to, her, to our team. I know we're almost at a year, but uh, please do so. You, you are such a blessing to our uh, congregation and what we're trying to move towards. And what you just ended on is my simple prayer, it is here am I. Uh, would you bow your heads as we go before the Lord to proclaim that? Lord, here am I. A word, a phrase that can go beyond a Sunday, a phrase that can go beyond the Sunday morning experience, that can go beyond into the hard parts of life, into the real parts of life, into the questions about life, into the questions about our human experience. That phrase, that phrase of worship is something we can hold on to. And every person who said that phrase, we've seen how you communed with them. We've seen how you were shown up in their life. We've seen how you talked with them and walked with them. As we end our time, Lord, would you let us have a posture of, here am I. Even as a practice into this next song, may we just stand and say, here am I. And as we worship together collectively, we know you meet us in our response because you first move towards us and we respond to that love. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.